Victoria Moran is an author, professional speaker, podcast host, and founder of Main Street Vegan Academy, training and certifying vegan lifestyle coaches and educators. She has published 13 books about well-being, spirituality, and vegan living. Her 14th book, Age Like a Yogi, is due out in late 2024. Veg News Magazine lists Victoria among the top 10 living vegetarian authors. You think it should be vegan authors? <laughs> She hosts the Main Street Vegan podcast and the Main Street Vegan talk show streaming on Unchained TV. Her care for animals is expressed as co-director of the Compassion, Compassion Consortium, an interfaith spiritual center for animal advocates, as well as serving as lead producer for the 2019 documentary, A Prayer for Compassion. A current project features uh, a film co-written with her husband, William, Melton, titled Miss Liberty, about a cow who escapes from a slaughterhouse. Oh. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Victoria Moran. Oh. Thank you, Glenn. <laughs> it, it is an honor to be introduced by Glenn Mercer. I was in Houston yesterday, Glenn, and everybody kept saying to me, I really admire Glenn Mercer. I really read a lot of Glenn Mercer. And I said, well, I'm going to be seeing him today. So hi, everybody, and thank you for being here. Thank you for coming to this amazing festival and also for leaving all the food and the stuff. I want to go jewelry shopping in, in a, you know, when things ease up a little bit. So thank you for choosing to be here for this hour. So what we're going to be talking about is plant-powered living for slow motion aging. Who wants to age in slow motion? Aha, yeah. Me too. So we're going to start by talking about what aging really is. So we've got chronological. That is what your driver's license has to, to say about you. And that means almost nothing. So who has ever been to a high school reunion? And you know at a high school reunion, especially if it's not your own, and you just go there with a spouse or somebody, and you're meeting a bunch of people for the first time, it looks like some of those people are still in high school. And some of them look like they could be grandparents of somebody still in high school. So there is a range. And there's genetic, and there's life experiences, and things happen. But there are some things we can do to make ourselves healthier, happier, and more vibrant all our lives long, and it doesn't matter what the number says. So in terms of that number, you can share it or not share it. It's nobody's business. I share it because I've been vegan for 40 years and I'm 74 and I'm still upright. So, you know, was 47 better? I suppose in some ways, but 47 is gone. So I'm just going to rock 74. And <laughs> chronology, yeah, not such a big deal. Now, cosmetic is interesting because there's an awful lot about that going on in the world and they use that term anti-aging, which always sounds to me like pro-dying early. <laughs> anti-aging, very weird. And I know what they mean is that we don't want to age prematurely. You know, we want life to proceed as it is meant to, which means that if we were doing it like animals in nature, We'd be vibrant and vi vital and doing really well until the very, very end, short downhill trajectory, and then we're on to the next adventure. But as we know, very often with humans in our culture and increasingly around the world, it's not like that. People start to go downhill pretty early, and then sometimes it's a very long, slow period of what the doctors call morbidity when one thing has fallen apart after another or there's some kind of condition that really takes away from the joy of life. And so we don't want that. Now, in terms of the cosmetic thing, there are things that we can do with our lifestyle to look better. And one of them is just to be more hydrated. Has anybody ever had a kitty cat who gets elderly and gets put on fluids? 
I think that happens a lot for, for cats. And I had a cat named Henry. She actually lived to be 23. But when she was about 19, 20, things were going a little bit south for, for Henry. And the vet suggested that we do subcutaneous fluids twice a week. And people would come over and say, what happened to Henry? She looks like a young cat. And I thought, if it can do that for the cat, I'm going to see what it can do for me. So here is a really cool thing about being hydrated. We always think it's chugging the water and chugging the water. And that's fine. We need to drink water. But the coolest water is in the fresh fruits and vegetables. So who in here hangs around with people that you would consider health nuts? like people that kind of go so far on the let's take care of myself that they get to be a little bit odd. Well, what one person admits to that. So thank you, sir. But truly, if you get involved in, in health nut discussions, it is very often going to turn to water. And people are going to argue. And they're going to say you should only have distilled water because that is the only pure water. And somebody else is going to say you should never have distilled water. That's going to take the minerals out of your bones. You should only have mineral water. And somebody else is going to say you should never have mineral water because those are inorganic minerals. And they're going to clog up your joints. They're going to cause arthritis. Somebody else says you're all wrong. You should only have alkaline water. And I am selling the machine for $2,500. <laughs> But guess what? The water in fresh fruits and vegetables is naturally distilled. It is mineralized with organic minerals. And it's alkaline. So eat the plants, eat the produce, and take care of a whole lot of things. Now, cosmetically, what else can we do? We can be careful in the sun. We can wear hats and gloves and all those kinds of things. And we can start that early. I used to drive a lot because I'm from Kansas City, Missouri. And I drove everywhere and I drove my daughter everywhere. And 24 years ago, I moved to New York City, got rid of my car. So I have not driven in all those years. This hand looks older than this hand because the left hand was there in the car. And it's interesting to see things that you do at one point in life can show up later. So. We take care of ourselves on the outside, but what's really important is what is going on on the inside. And that is physiological aging. And this is what is so exciting about this whole food plant-based lifestyle and everything that goes with it, because we really can change our physiology. It used to be believed there just wasn't a whole lot we could do. So back in the 1980s, it was believed that once you had atherosclerotic plaque, once you had the beginnings of heart disease, which we know some people start to get, in fact, many people in our culture eating the standard American diet start to get in childhood and adolescence, but that once that process was going, that was it. Maybe, maybe you could figure out how to stop it, but you could not reverse it. And then, Along comes a young internist in California, Dr. Dean Ornish, who thought, you know what? Maybe that's wrong. And he did the work using a low-fat, virtually vegan diet, along with meditation, mild exercise, and group support, and found, you know what? It's reversible. So, so many amazing things are possible physiologically. You can talk to people here today and just find people who have been doing this for a while and they will give you testimony. Like, hallelujah, I have been plant-based since 2007 and my cholesterol went down and I lost weight without trying and my doctor smiles every time I come in. And sometimes it's like, okay, right, that's kind of a wild story. There is wild story after wild story after wild story until you figure, you know what? Maybe this isn't so wild after all. And then there's attitudinal aging. So how do you feel about life? 
they did a study that showed that people kind of have angst in adolescence and they don't have the greatest emotional health quotient because we're worried so much about what other people think and stuff like that. And then it starts to get better. And we just tend to become a little more optimistic, a little more accepting, a little happier throughout life until about age 55. And then, according to this study, it stops and starts to go down. Well, for heaven's sakes, we don't have to do that. We can just keep it going up or at a steady keel forever because of how we see things. And nobody can tell us how to see things or see things for us. That's really about us. Now, some people seem to be congenitally happy. So who is just positive? It's okay, we won't be mad. Yeah, some people, you know, and I'm not. That's why I got into writing self-help books. <laughs> but it's wonderful when you just kind of see the glass half full. And the rest of us have to practice this. And there's so much help today for doing these things. You know, on YouTube, there are probably, I don't know, thousands of things that you can listen to early in the morning, five minutes to 30 minutes, where they're just gonna pump you full of positive ideas about yourself, about your life, about what's possible. And sometimes it seems like, oh, Pollyanna, you know what? I'll bet Pollyanna aged really, really well. <laughs> and we also wanna have a good attitude about the age that we are, because we can't change the chronology, but we can change so much else. So when we talk about plant-powered living, it's not just plants. It's a whole package of knowing that we are doing the best we can for our own bodies, for innocent animals, and for the planet. And it's also really cool in a spiritual sense because you get this idea of, okay, I can't do everything, but I can do something. And one of the cool things about being vegan is that you don't really have to carry a sign or give money or do anything terribly active because you're gonna eat three times a day anyway. And you do so many wonderful things for yourself and for the world just by choosing plants. So what we're gonna talk about today is the Magical MEND program. Ooh. I like acronyms. I like things that help me remember. So I came up with the MEND program when I was thinking about my grandmother, who was really good at sewing. Does anybody sew? It's kind of a lost art. When I was a little girl, everybody's mom made their clothes, except my mom, and I was kind of an outcast. <laughs> but my grandmother could sew. And she could take something that was ripped or torn, and with a needle and thread, she could just make that tear go away. It's like, did you have a grandmother like that? You just can't even see where, where it was. And I was thinking, what if we could do that with our lives? What if we could kind of hit the delete key on maybe what we ate like last week or what we drank back in college or whatever else it was that we kind of wish in retrospect we had done differently? And I thought, you know what? We really can. So it started smaller. It started with a concept that I called me in the morning. If you take care of yourself, me in the morning, M-E, with meditation and exercise, then you're going to take care of everybody else all day long. It kind of lays the foundation. But then I was thinking, well, food is really important. And then that became men. But that didn't sound like a very good acronym, especially since my groups are largely women. But nourishment, very important. What we eat and how we nourish ourselves in other ways. And then D, for detoxification. Because we live in kind of a dirty world these days. And we're eating things and we're slathering stuff on our bodies and we're breathing air that maybe isn't the best. And so we can take care of some of that too. And with this MEND program, meditation, exercise, nourishment, and detox, you know what? Life is looking pretty good going forward. So I want to talk first about meditation, but I'm using this as a blanket term for 
inner life, for finding something on which you can focus and be still. It's really interesting. We're going to be talking about exercise soon. And exercise and meditation appear to be opposites, but what they really are are balancers. Because to be healthy, to be happy, to be vibrant throughout life, we need to have a way to go within and also a way to really be out there moving our bodies. So we're going to start with the going within. So you don't have to do classic meditation. You can have prayer. You can write in a journal. You can listen to uplifting music. You can spend time in nature. And you can even get that wonderful focus whenever you're doing something creative. Who's a creator? Who does art? Who does something? And do you ever just get involved in that and time goes away? It's, it's the coolest thing. You know something else that is very meditative are adventure sports. Anybody done skydiving or any of that kind of thing? The closest I get is aerial yoga, and that aerial <laughs> silk is like two feet off the ground. But even so, I don't want to fall on my head, so I have to be really focused, and that is a meditative kind of activity for me. But this is classic meditation. Who's, who's done it? Who's done it? And who does it regularly? Yeah, it's kind of like exercise. We've all done it. <laughs> but who does it every day or almost every day? Kind of fewer. So meditation can be fully secular. It does not have to be part of yoga. It doesn't have to be part of any kind of religion. It's the idea of focus. And certainly you can bring your spiritual life into it if you want to. That was where it started. But we know from studies that started being done in the 1970s that Meditation is amazing for the physical body as well as emotional well-being. So here is my favorite study. I was actually on a summit last week and they said they want me to talk about my favorite study. And it's like, well, I'd already talked about this one and I don't have another favorite study. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a scientist. So that was kind of a trick question. But I do have this favorite study. And they were looking at people who had meditated regularly for... 12, wait, for five years or more, that's it, five years or more, and found that they were 12 years younger physiologically. Now, what they were looking at was body mass index, uh, A1C. They were looking at hearing and vision and joint flexibility and all the things that are supposed to go the way we don't want them to go over time. And they found that these people who had sat quietly. Now, they were looking at people who was pretty serious. They were doing transcendental meditation, so that was twice a day, 20 minutes each. But they were 12 years younger than the people who didn't do this. So let's do a little math. Good for the brain. Take your current chronological age, whatever it is, subtract 12. It's a lot, isn't it? Put some of you back in high school. <laughs> So it's very much worth doing, very much worth doing. Lower cholesterol, improved immunity, fewer sick days, and in some studies, extension of life. So what do we do? Well, we sit. And you can sit on a chair. You can sit on your bed and lean against the backboard. Am I really bothering the camera people by illustrating? OK. Or you can just sit on the floor like a yogi and be. You want your back to be a little bit straight. And what you want to do is not get rid of thoughts, because we can't get rid of thoughts. It was St. Francis who said that there's nothing wrong with having thoughts during meditation. You just don't want to invite them to build nests in your hair. So what we're going to do is just take a minute and go within. Now, you can just watch your breath, or some people like to use a mantra. Now, in the yoga tradition, this is a Sanskrit word, Om Shanti, peace, peace. That's all good. If you got one of those, use those. But if you don't, let's just use a lovely phrase in English that'll give us a little bit of affirmation action and a meditation focus, and that is all is well. So we're going to close our eyes here in a minute, and we're going to breathe in all is, and we're going to breathe out 
well. Now, the monkey mind is liable to say, all is not well. <laughs> I mean, tax day is coming up Monday. You've got to write that great big chat. And you're going, all is well. And the monkey mind is saying, haven't you watched the news lately? Everything is falling apart. All is well. And you're not lying to yourself because at some level that maybe we don't see or understand, all really is well. It's all kind of working out. So let's just take a minute here as we start this beautiful day at Michiana Veg Fest. Close your eyes and inhale, all is. Exhale, well. And go for a minute at your own pace. And on your next exhalation, let go of your phrase and just sit for a couple of seconds. And then open your eyes, come back to the room. It's nice, isn't it? And we just did seconds. And so think what happens when you do this a couple of times a day. Once a day, how long you do it? 10 minutes at least, maybe work up to more. And just see what happens. I always think of the story of a man that I knew back in Kansas City, and he had triple bypass surgery and was told by his doctor to start meditating. So he did. And then after time, you know, his heart was doing fine, his checkups were good, he kind of let it go. And he and his wife one day were having words and she said, I liked you better when you meditated. <laughs> that really shocked him because she didn't meditate and he didn't know that she knew that he stopped. But just the way he was in the world showed that he had stopped. So it does something and it's the first part of the MEND program. And now we're gonna get into exercise and I wish we didn't have to because I am not someone who loves to sweat. And if you're not either, after I talk about how great it is to exercise, I'm gonna address our particular situation. But for people who love to exercise, okay, brag if you love to exercise, raise your hand, you know, we won't come after you, I promise. Okay, we admire you. We admire you, just like the positive people. Now, if you are naturally positive and you love to exercise, that's just too much good karma for one lifetime, so, uh, okay. But this was me in Philadelphia at the Rocky Place. You know, when you go to that Rocky Place, you gotta run up the stairs with the song playing in your ears. It's just cool. But all these amazing things that happen with exercise. We know that it's cardiovascular health, bone strength, and all kinds of interesting things. Injury and fall prevention, who knew? and lower all-cause mortality. But here is the coolest, coolest, coolest thing about exercise. I learned it from a book called Younger Next Year. Did anybody read that? Not a vegetarian book, so you know, I skipped the food part. It's mostly about exercise. But Younger Next Year and Younger Next Year for Women, basically the same book, pink cover, says this. It's co-author of Medical Doctor Explains that when we are moving, the message gets to the brain and from the brain to the body. This person is active. This person is still in the game. You need to take care of this person. This person needs that helpful hormone. They need that immune response. So show up and all is well. Now, why does it do that? Because back in the long ago cave person era, life was tough. Winters were hard. We went into caves and hoped we might make it. And those who were able to be still enough and conserve enough energy to come out in the spring and reproduce did make it. 
And those were our ancestors, and here we are. But so many people got so still, they just died. And so, in an evolutionary sense, the message of being sedentary is, eh, this person's on their way out. Absolutely no reason for you to take care of him or her or them. But when we're moving, the opposite message gets sent. And you know what? If we're being sedentary, it's not like starvation. It's not the message of, oh, this person isn't eating. It's like, no, this person isn't moving. And so we're going to take care of ourselves by moving our bodies as long as we live. I find that so inspirational, motivational, and exciting. So you know how to do this. This is all review for people who would come to the Michiana Veg Fest. Cardio means moving, getting your heart rate up. I once interviewed Dr. Kenneth Cooper, who invented the word aerobic. And my daughter says to me, you were alive before they had aerobics? <laughs> And then there's strength training. I like strength training when I'm in the mood to exercise because it gives you substance. It gives you this sense of, I am worth the air I breathe and the space I take. I deserve to be here. It's a wonderful, wonderful sense. Has anybody had that? Anybody work out with weights and then you just start to feel so good about yourself? It's, it's a cool, cool thing. If you haven't done it, give it a shot. And you also want to do that for your bone health because there's nothing like weight training to get strong bones to last you your whole life long. Then flexibility, whether it's yoga, whether it's dance. I know a lovely woman, you can find her online. Her name is Kimberly Wilson. And she's like a Parisophile. She loves the Parisian kind of life. She's a yogi. She's a psychologist. She's a Renaissance woman. And she started ballet at 45. And then she needed a hip replacement at 50. And she went back to ballet. Is that cool or what? So having role models for aging is a cool thing too. Then we've got balancing because people fall. People fall when they get older, and if they break a hip, that's bad news. So you balance. You stand on one leg when you're stirring the stew. You stand on one leg when you're brushing your teeth. You close your eyes, and that makes it even harder. But balance, important. And then there is standing. OK, if you're having any kind of trouble sitting, standing, whatever, just stay seated. But if it's easy for you to get up, let's just get up, just for practice. This is something that if you are staring at a computer screen all day, it's good to set your clock for five minutes before the hour and just get up. Now, I happen to have a rescue pigeon. And so I get up at five minutes before the hour to clean up after my pigeon. If you don't have that kind of motivation, you can get up and do something else. But it is important, particularly for the prevention of heart failure. We talk so much about cardiovascular disease, but a lot of people in later life get heart failure. And they have shown that standing often through your day is better for preventing that than even doing an hour of aerobic exercise. Although we need to be doing that too. Please be seated. OK, then we've got moving. Just regular moving through life. Instead of, honey, can you bring me some tea? Make your own tea. <laughs> it's good for you. But now, I said I would speak to those of us who are not exercise fanatics. There is a condition, and I made it up. It's called activity resistance disorder. A-R-D for short, because when a condition has initials, you can get insurance to pay for it. <laughs> now, if you have A-R-D, remember, it was your ancestors who could rest really well that made sure you'd be here. So truly, we are the cool kids. But these days, we really do need to figure out a way out of this. So seriously, 
if you're really tired, if the idea of exercise is just like, oh my gosh, I would, but I can't, get yourself checked out. Because it could be thyroid, it could be chronic fatigue syndrome, heaven knows, it could be a pathology. But if it's not, it's probably ARD. So what you do with ARD is you find somebody to get you to exercise. If you've got the money, hire a trainer. If you don't, get a friend. Because we'll show up for other people when we don't show up for ourselves. That's just how we're wired. And you can also find some way to exercise that you detest less than most ways. Now, the way that you know that you have ARD is if getting up, just getting up, is a depressing thought. <laughs> you know that you have ARD if the couch is your favorite place to be. You know that you have ARD if the most challenging machine at the gym is the front door. <laughs> so if this is the case for you, get a buddy and try some things out. Try some interesting, unusual things out. Try Pilates, try yoga, try gyrotonics. Try whatever it is. Pickleball. Who plays pickleball? I've never done it, but I know people do, and it makes them happy. So, nourishment. Now, I used to call the N in the MEND program nutrition, but a lot of people think that nutrition is little bottles at the GNC. So it's so much more than that. And before we even get into what we're going to eat, let's think a little bit about how we nourish ourselves overall. So think about what do you look at? In Ayurvedic medicine, I'm going to be talking about Ayurveda this afternoon, one of the little suggestions is that when you open your eyes in the morning, you find something beautiful for each one of your senses. So when I open my eyes, the first thing I see is my little dog. My little dog came from hoarding, so he has PTSD, but he's just dog of my heart. So I'm seeing beauty. And then you might have some little essential oils that you smell, so you're smelling something nice. And you might like touch something, maybe pet your cat, something lovely in the morning. This is a way to nourish yourself. And even when it comes to food, you want the presentation to be lovely and beautiful. You know, if you go to all the trouble to make yourself a really healthy smoothie in the morning, who makes smoothies? And who makes green smoothies? Yeah, really good. And you can hide the greens in there. If you got enough berries, you don't even know they're there. Although I must say, I was trying to trick my husband once. I got one of those, like, coffee containers it has a little bitty hole in the top for the steam to come out and I made him a smoothie green smoothie and I put it in there and I put the lid on it and he looks at that little bitty hole and he says I know this is green <laughs> but I'm gonna drink it anyway because he's, he's a good guy so you want to celebrate yourself with your food so say you're making this great smoothie, green or otherwise. Now you could put it in a plastic superhero's cup from the Taco Bell. Or you could put it in a stemmed goblet. It just seems better that second way. Makes you feel better about yourself because you are absolutely worth it. So here's what we're going to be eating. The five fitness food groups. I came up with that little phrase in this book, Main Street Vegan. So we've got vegetables, and you want to emphasize the greens. They are so cool. Some people believe they should be their own food group. Sea vegetables provide iodine. They're cool, too. Fruits, especially berries, wild blueberries are the coolest little berries. Who's into wild blueberries? They're little tiny things. If you cut a regular blueberry, which is a fabulous food, in half, you see it's all clear inside. So those wonderful antioxidants are in the skin. The wild blueberries, they're blue all the way through. And they are tough little fruits. If the area where they're growing even burns away, they'll come back. And they'll come back stronger. And the easiest way to get them is frozen. And people say, oh, I wish they were fresh. You know what? 
The wild blueberries are better frozen because that's an assault and they're an adaptogen and they come back better. Cool berries, but they're all good. And then we've got legumes, so important. Beans, beans, beans. We need to eat beans every day. And if anybody in here besides me is over 70, you need to have beans or some kind of soy product or some kind of thing like that at every meal because even though we get plenty of protein from plants, do you ever get sick of being asked about protein? Yeah. Does anybody ever just want to carry a card with you? <laughs> when somebody asks you that, you can just whip it out. But the truth is that once you hit the big 7-0, you do need a little bit more protein, so some kind of legume at every meal. Whole grains and seeds, and I've named some of the ones that are particularly high in omega-3 fatty acids, which are a little bit harder to get. Now, you want to take your time. You want to sit. You want to use the good dishes. I mean, please, if you are over whatever age you think is appropriate, you don't want to wait and save those good dishes. <laughs> Engage in uplifting conversation and say grace. I love that idea. I know when my daughter was little, we found a very secular grace that would work for anybody of any tradition. And it said, Earth who gives to us this food, sun who makes it ripe and good. Dear Earth, dear sun, by you we live. Our loving thanks to you we give. Ah, oh, you remember things that you learn when you're young, right? You forget where you put your keys. OK. Uh, <laughs> and you want to. Focus on the food. You know, they always say, when you eat, just eat. Don't do anything else. But please, if you're all by yourself, you're going to do something else. So maybe listen to music or listen to a podcast, but focus really on the food and on the wonder of how you got it. Not everybody has food to eat, and we do, and that's something to be grateful for. So here's my first vibrant dining hack, and that is three meals a day with living in between. You know, we've come through this multi-decade thing about grazing, where we were told for years and years and years, you should just eat all day long and keep your blood sugar completely steady. And yet, it's natural for the blood sugar to kind of go up and down. So when you eat when it's time to eat and live when it's time to live, you give your digestion time to work and you're not putting more food in there before it's taken care of what you already put in there. So this is really good for digestion and really good for people that feel like, oh, I, you know, I can't lose weight, I can't lose weight. Well, try eating three meals a day and have all you want of plant-based foods and see what happens. When it happened for me, I let go of 60 pounds and they just never came back and that was 40 years ago. Let go of diet think and eat heartily. Ooh, who has ever been on, I hesitate to even say this four letter word, a diet. Horrible, awful, confining, restrictive, unkind and unfair. Ah, when you eat plants, that stuff is in the past. In fact, one of the biggest mistakes that a lot of people make when they're just starting out with plant-based eating is they don't eat enough. So you've really got to eat enough. I get my salad bowls at a restaurant supply house because they just don't make them big enough anywhere else. You got to have tossing room and lots and lots of wonderful food. So with your raw veggies, eat an enormity. Cooked veggies, eat all you want. Fruits, pretty good. And whole grains, plenty. Beans, what it takes to feel satisfied. Nuts and seeds, just enough because they're concentrated, but they're still really good foods. And dried fruit is in the treat category. But it means you can have amazing things like avocado mousse and raw chocolate cake and base them on dried fruits, and that's real food. 
and it still gives you the opportunity to have something sweet at the close of a meal. And hack number three is think color, variety, and pretty groceries. Have you ever been to a thing where everybody else is an omnivore and you ask for the something different and it comes and it's just all vegetables and it's all pretty. Now maybe there's no beans there, maybe there's no grains there, maybe you're gonna be hungry after you eat it, but it looks so good that the omnivore people are gonna say, eh, why didn't I get that? Like, well, you could. So you want to have amazing, beautiful, beautiful food. So years ago, hardest period of my life, my first husband passed away and my daughter was four years old. I didn't know what I was supposed to do with my life. But what everybody said was don't do anything for a year. So for one year, I just stayed put. And on day 365, I still didn't know what to do. So I decided I would move to the country. Now, I have never lived in the country, but people said it was the simple life. Oh. <laughs> so I was living in Kansas City at the time, and the country, when you live in Kansas City, is really the country. So I moved to the central Missouri Ozarks. I was completely out of my element. I didn't know how to navigate life, but I did know I'm here, and I've got this little girl, so I better go to the grocery store. And I will never forget that first grocery shopping adventure. I got all my beautiful plants like we eat, and I'm standing there at the conveyor belt, and the woman just stops the belt, and she looks me straight in the eye, and she says, I've had this job for 15 years, and I have never seen such pretty groceries. <laughs> Pretty groceries, make pretty people, make healthy people, and can make a really good life. Now we're going to the final element of the Magical Mend program, and that is detox. And some people think, oh, she's going to tell me to fast or do a juice cleanse or one of those awful flushes. Now, you know, you do whatever you like. Life is full of adventures, and we need to have all of them. Oh my goodness, I, I have fasted, I've fasted at institutes, I've done juice, I've done all kinds of things. But that's not what I'm going to talk about here. I'm going to talk about not getting so toxic to begin with. So let's start with what we put on ourselves. So lots of times it's like, oh, you know, it's just on my skin. It's not going to do anything to me. There are people using patches to stop smoking. That nicotine goes into them. So what goes on the outside, some of it does get inside. So we want to just have clean stuff. So the Environmental Working Group, very good people, have a wonderful page on their website called Skin Deep. And they'll just tell you whatever kinds of body care products, cosmetics, makeup, whatever, are super duper natural. And leapingbunny.org tells you if they're cruelty free. Now, if that seems very complex, there is a little fun fact that the majority of the time, not 100% of the time, but almost, the non-toxic stuff will be cruelty-free, and the cruelty-free stuff will be less toxic. So, good to know. Now, there is a toxic waste dump underneath almost everybody's kitchen sink. All this cleaning stuff. You know, if you walk down the cleaning aisle in the grocery store with somebody who is chemically sensitive, they'll get sick. They'll get a headache because that stuff is outgassing even when it's all sealed up. You can totally clean your whole house with vinegar, baking soda, club soda, and a lemon. Really cheap. It leaves you more money for organic produce. Or you can buy the natural stuff. But please do that because every toxin you don't breathe in, touch, or eat is a good toxin. You want to sweat, bounce, and hydrate. This helps your body detox. We've got all these organ systems that are designed in part or in full for detoxification. So when you exercise and you sweat, that helps your skin to detox. And there's special kind of exercise you can do to help your lymphatic system. 
because your heart is circulating your blood, so your circulatory system gets help your whole life long. Your lymphatics has nobody to help except you. And so all exercise is good for the lymphatic flow, but the bouncy kind is really good. So a mini trampoline, who's got a mini trampoline at home? Pull it out of the garage, pull it out of the attic, bounce on that. And also those big medicine balls that they have in some gyms, you can just bounce. And I always do this in the morning in the gym in my building. And people come in and they look at me like, oh, I'm going to really exercise. That woman's just sort of, I don't know, bouncing. But I'm going to have better lymphatics than them. And then you want to hydrate, as we talked about earlier. You want to breathe clean air. So going on vacation to the beach is wonderful. But just open a window because indoor air is always dirtier than outdoor air, even if you live in a really big city. You want to use those fans when cooking with gas. Did you hear a few months back that we're going to ban gas stoves? It's like with everything going on in the world, that seems a little bit low on the list. But you do want to have your vents going if you're cooking that way. And you want to learn some basic yoga breathing exercises. You can go on YouTube and just look up um, pranayama classes. And you'll find these lovely folks from India have a beautiful five-part program on breathing. And it's really, really helpful. I do the five-day program maybe once a month and feel better that I do. Then you want to sleep well. You don't know how important sleep is until you miss some. And I didn't get to sleep very much night before last. I was on the plane, and I'm sitting there, and everything's all ready, and we're starting to taxi. And then what do you want least to hear in a plane that is about to take off? This is your captain speaking. <laughs> so the plane needed to part. Long and short of it is we were delayed for six hours. So I was speaking yesterday at another festival. Now, this festival started at the humane hour of 11. That one started at 8. So I just hardly got any sleep. Now, I know that if you do blackout drinking, you can get a lost weekend. Missing out on sleep gives you a lost Saturday. So it's really important that you try to get to bed by 10 and get up at 6. That's another Ayurvedic suggestion that that puts you in the rhythm of nature. And some people are like, but I'm a night person. If you had lived before Edison, you couldn't have been a night person. You would have bumped into the furniture. So get your sleep. Sleep in a dark, cool, quiet room. Turn off the electronics an hour before. And this wonderful Ayurvedic hack of massaging your feet before bed with warm sesame oil. Like, how can that help a person sleep? I don't know how. I just know it does. So rub your feet with that wonderful oil and put on some nice loose socks. Pleasant dreams. So if you want to be connected with me, I've got a couple of websites. One's my name, one is Main Street Vegan. As Glenn said, working on this movie and doing the podcast now for 10 years. We're going to have episode 500 coming up in August. Main Street Vegan Academy, if you want to take your outreach to the next level and become a professional vegan, check us out. And here are some books to turn back the clock. You know Dr. Gregor's How Not to Age. Everybody who's a fan of Dr. Gregor say, Yahoo! Yahoo! Yeah. Um, Younger Next Year was the exercise book that I mentioned. The two on top I wrote, uh, Younger by the Day, might be here today, I'm not sure. Age Like a Yogi is coming. But you know what they've done? They've put it on pre-order, even though it's not going to be ready till January. But what I learned from Dr. Greger and others is that for that New York Times bestseller list, which is so on my bucket list, oh, be still my beating heart, every pre-order counts for your opening week. So if I get lots and lots and lots of pre-orders, maybe I can check the New York Times bestseller list off my bucket list. So if you want to help me with that, uh, check out uh, Age Like a Yogi. And we are offering a free webinar, an all-day retreat, Age Like a Yogi, and also an Age Like a Yogi uh, recipe ebook for everybody that pre-orders. So 
Thank you. And uh, life is short. Play with your dog. This is little Rupert, and we hadn't had him very long. He was fresh from hoarding. He was actually rescued from Tennessee, where he had been living with 80 other dogs. And every day, you know, it's just like we talk about how we can change our bodies and change our attitudes. He's getting in touch with his inner dog. And every day he's more and more like a dog. And that's what happens to us when we change how we live. Every day we get to be more and more the way we were designed, which is happy and healthy and joyous and free. And we'll age in slow motion. Thank you all so much. Bless you. And I think there's time for a couple of questions. I either scared you or said everything. Okay. Yes, here. You were very comprehensive. Oh, bless very you. Very understandable. Thank you. Thank you. I'll take another compliment or a question. <laughs> Just a simple question. When you talk about hydrating, with the fruits or even just water, of course, or tea. Um, is there a difference between, let's say, drinking sips all day long from some bottle you carry around during the day or versus every few hours, like drinking a glass or two, you know? Yeah, so in Ayurveda, it is recommended that you drink a lot of water first thing in the morning, warm, room temperature, or hot, and you can put lemon in it or you can put ginger in it and have like 16 to 32 ounces. I mean, really a lot of water. I'll never do 32 ounces, but you know, I guess maybe some big guy can. But to really hydrate in the morning, because overnight we dehydrate. But the rest of the time, sips during the day, li little sips, just uh, warm water, hot water, or room temperature. Yes. So what is the a day. What do you eat in a day? Okay, <laughs> that's a great question. So what I eat in a day is seasonal. It depends on if you're asking me in the summer or the winter. But generally speaking, I like to have a smoothie in the morning if the bananas are ripe. And if they're not, I go to plan B or plan C. But I like to do in the summertime when I'm okay with something a little bit cooler, I'll have a smoothie that's got berries and greens and always flax. And uh, I even use a little bit of protein powder. Some people don't do that, but I am in that you know older age group. So I do that and it's great. And it, it's colorful and it's bright and it makes me feel like I've really done something for myself. Now in the winter, my smoothie is an Ayurvedic chocolate shake, which has warming spices in it. So it's got cinnamon, clove, nutmeg, cardamom, all the kind of Christmas cookie spices. And that way I can go out into the snow and I still feel warm inside. Plus I've had all those amazing antioxidants. And then for lunch in the warmer weather, it's one of those great big salads. And, but it's a salad with oomph to it. It's a salad with stuff in it. You know, sometimes has anybody ever said to you, oh, you're vegan you must eat a lot of salad. And they say it in a way that you can tell they feel sorry for you. But it's not that kind of salad. It's not lettuce and tomato. It's all kinds of cool greens and beautiful colored vegetables. And then you can steam some vegetables, which seems to just give it a little more momentum, like um, the cabbage family vegetables, in particular broccoli. I really like it when it's steamed. And then you can steam your yellow fin potatoes, your winter squash, your sweet potatoes. Put all that in the salad, put in some pumpkin seeds, some hemp seeds, and make a wonderful, either a nut-based dressing or, or an oil-free kind of dressing with balsamic vinaigrette. I just learned a new vinegar. I got into black rice vinegar. Ooh, it's so good. Anyway, so I'll have a big salad like that. And I also make my midday meal my biggest meal. And so if I'm gonna have a little dessert, if I'm gonna have the like raw chocolate cake I talked about or a little tiny piece of dark chocolate, that's when I'll have it. Uh, and then when I want something that's just warmer and more you know, wintry, I'll do a stew or a kind of stir fry. 
I call it beans and greens because there's always beans in it, there's always greens in it, and then sometimes, you know, different vegetables, different spices. Turmeric, I mean, all these spices are so important. It used to be that my spices would outdate, and I'd pick up a spice for a recipe, and I'd look on it, and it would say, 2009. I'd be like, whoa, what happened there? But now, now that I know how fabulous they are, I go through spices like crazy. And then um, dinner, or what I call it supper, I kind of do breakfast, dinner, supper, because I like to eat the main meal in the midday when your digestion is most ready to work. Um, so evening time is just simple. So maybe soup or kitchari, which is an Ayurvedic thing, which is basically rice and a split bean, like a split mung dal or a split lentil with whatever vegetables you like. And again, all the fabulous curry type spices. And that can just go, I've got a little two person slow cooker and that's nice for dinner. Or sometimes we'll just have something like fruit with nut butter, you know, just simple, simple, so that the digestion can be over with before going to bed. Do we have another minute? One more minute. Well, okay, hi, sir. Well, ideally, for your own personal health, whole plant foods are the thing. I mean, we were designed, we've evolved to eat whole foods. You know, we haven't had time to catch up <laughs> with all of the packaged stuff. But if it helps you to do this, if it helps you be plant-based, by all means, ha do whatever it takes. Because we're talking about our physical health, we're talking about the horrible treatment and, and premature slaughter of these innocent, sweet, sweet creatures. If you haven't been to a farmed animal sanctuary, if you haven't really met a pig or a turkey, it's a life changer. And then we've got the environment. So yeah, it's all good. Now it is interesting with processed foods, there are some that are a lot better than others. And you can read the labels and you can find out like some of the burgers that you buy in the store have the same ingredients you might use if you were making them yourself. So there's one that I like, it's from a little family company in uh, North Carolina, I think, it's called No Bull Burger. And it's oil free and, and all that, and really good. And you can find products like that. But if you're traveling, if you're at an airport and the Impossible Burger is what they've got, and it's either that or fainting, you know, it. it I mean, I've been vegan for, for 40 years, but I'll eat that stuff when that's what's available. I don't go out of my way to have it at home, but it's all good. And the fact that it's becoming an option, this is what is so cool to me. I was in that airport yesterday in Houston when I was really sleepy and looking for a place to try to rest. And somebody said, do you have an American Express card? I'm like, yeah. And they're like, ooh, there's an American Express lounge. And it's like, oh, the lounge, you know, that's where all of the privileged people get to go. But this one you can go if you just have an American Express card. So I went in there and they had this buffet. And of course it wasn't all vegan, but they had cucumber, apple, and spinach little shots. And they had all kinds of amazing salads that were vegan. The soup was vegan. It was sort of like, is this Texas? <laughs> so, you know, it's wonderful that you can go into a Starbucks and get non-dairy milk. Yes, I know they charge extra for it. We're working on that. But the world is changing and everybody is contributing. And even for those of us who don't eat the processed foods, thank goodness they're out there because they're changing the planet. They're making it kinder and saner and greener, and that's all good. So thank you all so much for being part of this. I'm sorry, I can't take any more questions, but see me after. And if you want to know more about what I'm up to, I have some little packets about my new book and movie and Main Street Vegan Academy and podcast. So, um, you know, it'd make me feel happy if you came and took one. All the best, everybody. Have a fabulous day.